it is holla or it's challa I'm waiting for my bread to live in like some matza Get the money man I got to Or the lava flowing from the poetic one Who speaks it proper It's all about the value of a dollar Those who work for it they adore it Feels good when you spend it or you store it Hey hey it's your girl Danny Reagan Now rocking with the modern day Wonder Woman I am back at it again with another Behind the Vibe exclusive interview And joining me I have all around modern day renaissance man Mystery Yes, yes. Thanks. Right, mystery. I, I, Mr. E, mystery. I know you, you have this whole little intro going, so let's get right into it. Talk to me a little bit about your name and how that all came about. Yes, so the intro is in the classroom, it's Mr. E. To those who don't know me, it's a mystery. Soon I shall reveal my story. Pay attention so you don't miss the story. But mystery uh, kind of came more so when I started doing radio myself. Uh, I feel like it just kind of worked as like a radio personality vibe and an artist like Mr. E as in as well as mystery. Got you, got you. So let, let's talk about what it is that you do, um, both in a professional sense, because I know you have the whole nine to five thing going, and then you also have a lot of extracurricular activities. So let the people know what it is that you do. Absolutely. So Monday through Friday right now, um, seven, seven to three, uh, every day I'm at Link Community Charter School. Um, technically on staff as a permanent substitute teacher, but I do like a little bit of everything. I say the E stands for everything and everywhere. So I'm a performing hip hop and spoken word artist. Uh, I could rap with the beat or without the beat. Um, I'm also a visual abstract artist as well too, which I kind of which kind of took a, a back seat the past couple of years since I've been getting more into. Uh, the writing and, and performing uh, as a vocal artist. Talk to me a little bit about um, how you got started with, with spoken word and with rap and um, what it is that you plan to do with it. So I got, I got started with it probably in my teens, just messing around freestyling. And then around the same time, I was also writing poetry and rhymes, but I wasn't really connecting the two. It wasn't probably until like, 2021 that I really started putting it together, um, recording, putting out music videos, stuff like that. Uh, as far as what I plan to do with it, we're getting old in that. I mean, so many people rap now, so you have to be able to do more than just rap. So now that I'm, I've kind of been opened up to the youth and stuff like that, I actually plan on taking each of my songs, I want to turn them into children's books. I'm being more conscious now of of what I'm writing and who my audience is. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, like life is all peaches and cream and, and you know, but I'm trying to cur curse less. I'm trying to not even dumb it down, but simplify things to where everybody could understand. Hey, that's how Trump won, is he simplified things to the most, <laughs> you understand? So I'm trying to do that and um, yeah, essentially take these these rap songs, if you will, and have them in rhyme form, almost like Dr. Seuss in a way. So now, listen, you're you're from Jersey, am I right? Yes. Okay, where in Jersey are you from? Uh, I was born in Red Bank Hospital, lived in Matawan, New Jersey, for like, till I was like 11 or 12. And then I've been living in English Town um, the past 10, 10 to 12 years as well. All my family is originally from the Bronx, New York. Okay, that that explains a little bit of the, the urban in it. As I'm like, wait a minute, this this is a white guy, but he got a lot of flavor. Where's it coming from, man? Yeah, that's that's the Bronx. All right, cool, cool. Shout outs to the boogie down. Now, let's talk about this because you know you're obviously a, a white guy, right? What's what? What is your ethnicity? I'm I'm uh I am Caucasian. I'm also I'm Jewish. I'm 100% Jewish, but I'm not a religious person. Right. Like I'm not a religious Jew, but um the only reason I say um Jewish is because they're kind of their it's its own culture. Um, you know not ethnicity but it's a uh like lost tribes if you will travel um i don't i don't necessarily compare like jew with like the standard like um caucasian like catholic person there's a little bit different but in true essence i mean i have i have a lot of diversity like um married into the family like i have cuban cousins black cousins italian cousins you know what i mean and then even a lot of my um like friends are just diverse. Now, have you ever been criticized, you know, being that you're Caucasian, but you 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 tend to talk about a lot of um conscious material that would normally be said out of somebody who's African American or somebody who's Hispanic. So, you know, what what has that been like for you? That's that's a good question right there. Um it's been interesting and that kind of brings it back to the whole Judaism thing is, you know, Jews were actually the first ones in the ghettos in in uh Poland. You know what I mean? So 
I think it comes from that kind of um, similar struggle. But as a, as a Caucasian artist, you know, right off the bat, people, oh, he's a white dude, you know what I mean? And to be talking about these these things, I mean, I'd be lying if I didn't step into, say, if I would step into certain arenas and people, I feel a little bit of reverse racism, if yeah. you will. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it goes it goes both ways. But I think once people, once you actually start talking to people and breaking down that wall, then they understand, okay, this, you know, this dude's yeah. not so bad, so... I think it's just about, um, just as if you see somebody for the first time, you know, they, everyone has this wall that they put up when you see somebody for the first time, you know, everyone's real cold. It's not until you start talking to them that you start peeling those layers down. So it just takes time to sometimes peel down those layers. I mean, people are always given their first prejudge, you know, judgmental looks, but once, once I do a show and they hear what really in here and what's in here, then, then I win them over. So, so let's talk about the the artistry side, the 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 whole abstract art thing, because I have happened to see some of your your work, and I was thoroughly impressed. It was like art, but then messages within messages within messages. So, talk to us a little bit about that. Where does that come from? Um, that that comes from straight just improvisation, to be honest. Um, I called it chandrophism. You add an ism, and it just sounds like its own. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I'm, I'm I'm wild for that. But honestly, it just comes off uh, improvisation. Like when I was, ever since I was real young, I would I had like this monster book, and I would just like doodle like all these crazy characters and stuff like that. Um, when I was a little bit older, it came from just kind of doodling in class. I mean, it's kind of wild that I even work in a school now because I really didn't like school, and I was always just kind of doodling and doing stuff like that. So I would actually take lines and. What's pretty crazy about a lot of the artwork is sometimes I won't even know my exact direction and I just kind of start doing different, um, you know, swooping lines and strokes and then I just stop and kind of analyze it. And from there I start filling in, adding different colors and then as the piece progresses, I start um, seeing a larger vision and how each piece connects with, it, with each right. other. All right, so now let's get right into where can we find all of your artwork, all of your stuff. Plug yourself in. So you can look me up if you go to mysteryman.com. That's M-Y-S-T-E-R-E-M-A-N.com. You could also find me on Instagram, underscore mystery. That's underscore M-Y-S-T-E-R-E. You could also look me up on Facebook, Eric Shandroff. That's E-R-I-C space S-H-A-N. D R O F F and also YouTube Eric Shandro. So before I let you go, there's something that I always do in each one of my interviews, and that's ask whomever I'm interviewing, you know, to drop a gem. And basically what that is is just give a word of advice to whomever um is out there and probably wants to be where you are right now or is looking to start into the industry in which you're looking to break into. What advice would you give them? What would you say? And look right into that camera right there. Um just off the top, any advice is if you have something that you enjoy doing, that you're interested in, that makes you feel happy, then pursue it. And don't always follow the crowd. Um, a lot of the times we kind of get, you know, we don't reach our full potential because we're just kind of following the crowd and we're not staying true to ourselves. But most of the leaders oftentimes are alone sometimes putting in that work and you don't see them putting in that work you know like there's you know you wasn't with me shooting in the gym like you got to put that work in and um sometimes you even get thrown off course you know you think there's something that you really wanted and that was it and then something happened and it throws you off and next thing you know you're in a whole nother direction sometimes we kind of have to go to our plan b and c because it kind of brings us back to our plan a um so I'll just say stay focused, persistent, stay poised, and patience is that's something I'm really trying to work on as well, is just remaining patient because at times you feel like, yo, like why is this not happening like right now? Like I'm dope right now. Like I feel like like this is a hit. Like why why am I I'm I'm seeing these people on, on the big screen. Why am I not there? Um but we have to focus on our blessings sometimes more than what we don't have. And this is, you know, sometimes you have to take your own, I, I practice, I'm practicing what I preach. But, um, you know, I said in a song, uh, progression, and I'm actually, this is part of the advice. So I'm going to spit a little something 
real quickly. I said, success takes patience. You need to take it step by step. With every mile, you walk foot to foot, right to left. Like 100 push-ups ain't going to make you a bodybuilder. You do it day by day and watch as you improve your figure. Rome wasn't built overnight, overnight. The Wright brothers didn't fly up on their first flight. Check by check, day by day, we got to get paid. You study page by page until you get your final grade. They say that life's, life's a race, but the tortoise beat the rabbit. The rabbit thought he had it, but his steps he couldn't manage. The tortoise kept on going, determined that he grabbed it. Persistence is the key when you're living on this planet, step by step till I vanish. Keep it moving and steady stepping on the path to progression. Through the past, learn your lessons. Can only hope that the struggles balance out with the blessings. Blessings. And that's yes, it. That was deep, man. I so appreciate you for coming out. Um, thank you for, for sharing your talents and, and just your overall creative genius with us. Because that's really what it is at the end of the day. I appreciate right. you. So as always, I'm your girl, Danny Ray, the modern day Wonder Woman. This has been Behind the Vibe with Mr. E. And as always, if you like what you see, like or subscribe, it'd be greatly appreciated. And keep it locked. Wonder, wonder, wonder.